Okay, the Lewis structure for the sulfate ion, SO4, 2 minus. Now, sulfur is stable with a uh, stable octet with 8, but in this case, it's going to have 12 electrons around it to be stable, the so-called expanded octet. All right, first of all, you need to know how many uh, valence electrons we're talking about to do the Lewis structure. So you have to consult a periodic table. Both sulfur and oxygen are in group 16, so they have six valence electrons. So I've got six from the sulfur, and then four more sixes from the oxygen, and two extra electrons. Electrons are negative, there's a two minus charge there. And I'm actually really interested in the pairs of electrons, electron pairs. So that gives me 16. Sulfur goes in the middle. The first atom of the formula almost always goes in the middle and spread the others around evenly. So join them up to make one molecule. That seems straightforward. So I've dealt with four pairs of electrons, 16 in total, so I've got 12 more to distribute. So there we are, 16 electron pairs. Sulfur has six lines, six pairs of electrons. That's going to be 12 electrons, like we said at the beginning. And oxygen has the stable octets. Don't forget square brackets and a two minus, or you might lose a point. That's the Lewis structure. Now there are six resonance structures in total. This double bond here and that double bond there can be in any of these different positions. So in effect, this is... Uh, this isn't the entire truth of the sulfate ion. This is really a one and a half bond in these positions here, on average. All right. So what's the shape of this? Well, it's tempting to say that's the shape. I made the molecule with the double bond, but to, uh, that would be a square planar. But it isn't square planar. It isn't. The central atom has four electron domains and no lone pairs, I'm going back to the theory, that would mean it's going to be tetrahedral. Central atom has four electron domains and no lone pairs. So with the four electron domains, uh, which the sulfate ion has, these are trying to get, these electron uh, domains are trying to get as far away from each other as possible. And so if four things want to get as far away from each other as possible, they're going to adopt uh, the tetrahedral arrangement. Hundred nine and a half degrees for the bond angle there. But isn't this double bond going to be more repulsive? And no, 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 no. Don't forget, they aren't really double bonds. They're all one and a half bonds. Let's look at the uh, bond dipoles. So in order to work out the bond dipoles, you're going to need to look at the electronegativity values. So electronegativity values. Fluorine is four. That's the highest one. And we're dealing with oxygen and sulfur. So they have different electronegativity values. So oxygen is actually uh, attracts the pair of electrons in the bond more, has a higher electronegativity value. So 3.4 for oxygen. 3.4, 3.4, and 3.4. So are the bonds polar? Yep, they are. If I look at this single bond here, well, one and a half bond really, you can see that there's a difference in electronegativity. So the higher electronegativity, this is going to be a little bit negative, the oxygen, and even the sulfur to be a little bit positive. So it contains polar bonds. But what about the molecule itself? Is the molecule itself actually polar? Well, recalling that it's that shape, no, it isn't. A polar molecule or a molecule with a dipole uh, has uh, a charge separation. So like the one end is negative and one end's a little bit positive. No, no, no. All around the outside is negative here. So the bond dipoles cancel. So this is actually a non-polar molecule. It does have a charge, it's two minus, but in terms of the polarity, it is non-polar. You could say, well, you should say, the bond dipoles cancel. So 
So the bond dipoles cancel. There we go, uh, which means it's nonpolar. OK, we we'll use formal charge to try to prove that it's a, not a stable octet in the middle. Each follows the rules. Uh, stable octet all the way round and 16 lines representing 16 pairs of electrons. OK, so to do formal charge. So sulfur has six valence electrons and six bonds, so that has a zero formal charge. Oxygen has six valence electrons, minus one. Bond, that's five. Five minus six is going to give me minus one. All right, so to see which of these two structures is preferred, uh, first of all, we've got to look for the zeros. Zeros is good. Well, three zeros here and no zeros there. So already this is the preferred structure. Zeros went out. A second test, less important than which has the most zeros, is the most electronegative uh, atoms should have uh, negative formal charges. So there's two formal charges that, and look, those oxygens have those minus ones. So if you just only followed the second rule, which is the most electronegative atoms have the negative charge, then this one would win. But no, no, the rules are, have, there's two rules, and the priority is the most zeros is the first thing you have to pay attention to. So it's that one, and we're done.